Hey, ya! Uh, so today I'm going to explain click events and how to handle them in React. A click event is an interaction when a user clicks on a specific element. We can respond to clicks by passing a callback to the onClick event handler. In this example, we'll create a button. Let's create a button component. Go to new file, button.jsx. We will use a function based component, function button, then be sure to export it. Export default button. Going back to our parent component of app, we will need to import our button. Import button from its location, button.jsx. Then we will create one button component. Going to our button component, we will return a single button element. The button will have text of click me. Hey, for fun, I'm just going to add an emoji, but you don't have to. And I will zoom in so you can see it. Many HTML elements have an on click event handler. We can set the sequel to a JavaScript callback, but we need a function to work with. So within our button function, we can write an inner function. Const handle click. I will assign this equal to either a function expression or an arrow function. I like arrow functions, so I'm going to stick with an arrow function. When we click on the button, what do we want to do? Let's console.log the word ouch. So we have our function. We will set the onClick event handler equal to a callback, a callback to this function. When we click on the button, do this. If I went to my console, inspect console, let me refresh this. If I click on the button, we execute this code. We will output the word ouch every time I click the button. If your function has parameters, there's one change we'll need to make. Let's create a second function, const handle click to. This function will have a parameter of name. We'll use an arrow function. We will console.log, I'll use a template string. Let's display the name, stop clicking me. For the on click event handler, we will set a callback of handle click to. But we have parameters. That means we need to send a matching number of arguments. I will send my first name, but feel free to use your name. I didn't click on the button yet. I'm going to go to inspect console. Uh, let me refresh all this. I didn't click on the button yet, but we've already called that function. If you add a set of parentheses after a callback, you'll invoke it right away. So we don't want to do that. If we have arguments we need to send to a function, we could wrap this callback within a function expression or an arrow function. Let's use an arrow function. When we click on the button, do this. That will prevent us from calling this function right away. So let's refresh everything. Then when I click on the button, then we execute this code. Bro, stop clicking me. Bro, stop clicking me. Bro, stop clicking me. So that's how to send arguments to a function. Now, in this next example, we'll add some conditions. Let's set the onClick attribute to be a callback to handle click. If you have more than one line of code for your arrow function, you'll need to use a set of curly braces. Let's add a count variable. Let count equal zero. With our handle click function, let's have one parameter, a name. What would we like to do? Let's check to see if our count variable is less than three. If it is, let's increase count by one. Then console.log, I'll use a template string. Let's add our name parameter. You clicked me, add a placeholder, count time or times. Else, if the user clicked me more than three times, let's console.log a different message. Let's say, add a placeholder, 
name. Stop clicking me. With the onClick event handler, we have a parameter. That means we have to wrap this callback within a function expression or an arrow function. Let's use an arrow function for simplicity. We'll pass in a first name. Pass in your own first name. So let's save and refresh everything. Go to inspect console. When I click on the button once, it's going to display, bro, you clicked me one time. Bro, you clicked me two times. Bro, you clicked me three times. After the third time, we'll display a different message. Bro, stop clicking me. Bro, stop clicking me. Bro, stop clicking me. So within your functions, you can write some conditions. Now I need to explain the event parameter. Let's recreate that handle click function. Const handle click equals with click events were automatically provided with an event argument. It's an object that describes the event that occurred, but as a parameter, people usually shorten the event parameter to be simply E. Let's print our event. Console.log E, our event. We'll need to set the onClick event handler. We have one parameter, so we need to wrap this within an arrow function. Handle click. For the arrow function, we'll have E for the parameter and E for an argument for the handle click function. Let's click on the button. We're now outputting the event. Its type is synthetic base event, and it has all of these properties and methods, such as where you clicked on the screen, there's a timestamp and a target. By utilizing this event object, that gives us many different possibilities. For this demonstration, let's change the text content of the button. So there should be a target property here. I am going to change the text content. That should be a property. Yep, there it is. So what we'll do, after clicking on the button, we will access that event object. Follow this with dot, that's the property accessor. We're selecting the inner target object, then selecting the text content property. Let's set that equal to be ouch. So now when you click on the button, the text of the button should change to ouch. I'm going to add an emoji too. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. This will be fun. Click me. Ouch. There's also the on double click event handler. Instead of on click, you'll say on double click. So when we click on the button once now, nothing happens. But once I double click, that's when we'll execute this function. Now I'm going to double click. Ouch. If you need to handle a double click, you just have to use the on double click event handler. All right, let's move on from using a button. This time, let's use an image. In my assets folder, I do have my profile picture for my YouTube channel. Find a profile picture of yourself or a picture you like. We're going to create a new component. Let's go to our source folder. I will name this component profile picture dot JSX. We will create a function with the name of profile picture. Then be sure to export it. Export default profile picture. Then going back to our app component, we will import our profile picture component from its location. Profile picture .jsx. Let's include our profile picture component instead of our button. All right, so within our profile picture component, I will store a URL within a constant, constant image URL. I will list a relative file path. So my image is within my assets folder. My file location, but it might be different for you. Mine is going to be dot forward slash source slash assets slash the name of the image, including the extension. 
mine is profile.jpg. We will return an image element. IMG for an image element. I will set the source equal to some JavaScript. I need a set of curly braces. I will set it equal to my image URL. And let's see if that worked. Yes, it did, but I'm going to zoom out to like 150. My image is small. Let's add a handle click function. Const handle click equals an arrow function. To test it, let's console.log the word ouch. Then we'll need to set the on click event handler within our image. On click equals a callback to handle click. So let's save and refresh everything. Let's go to inspect console. When you click on your image, it should display the word ouch every time you click it. Let's utilize the event object that's generated. We have one parameter, E for our event. That means we'll have to change the callback to be an arrow function. E for the parameter, arrow, handle, click. We have one argument of E. So what should we do now? When we click on the image, let's hide the image. We'll need to access that event object, access the target object that's found within, access its style, then the display property. We will set the display to be none when we click on it. So then, if you were to click on your image, it should disappear. So by accessing the event object, that gives us a load of different possibilities for what we can do. All right, everybody, so that is an introduction to handling click events in React. A click event is an interaction when a user clicks on a specific element. We can respond to clicks by passing a callback to the on click event handler. And well, everybody, that is an introduction to click events in React.